introduction. Um, so like Sylvia said, I will focus mostly on the interaction between diet and the microbiota and how it influences our health. As uh, David has mentioned before, we have billions of bacteria that live in us and on us. And we know that there's different factors that can influence what bacteria are there. So one, it is where we live. So people here in Ireland will have a different microbiome than people maybe living in South America or the United States. Um, there's some factors that we cannot really influence much, such as genetics, our age, our gender. But then there's other ones we really can control. So how much we sleep, our exercise, diet, and as well as our stress levels. And these factors really influence the microbiome. And David has also mentioned that the microbiome is very important in influencing our, our health. Um, and Hippocrates has already said over 2000 years ago that all diseases begin in the gut. And now we know that the microbiota is not just important for our gut health and um, helping us utilize certain nutrients, but it also is important in influence our heart, heart health, bone health. Um, it's important to, for the development and supporting our immune system, our lungs, as well as the brain and mental health. So I'm focusing now on the factor diet that we can use to influence our microbiome. So we really know now that diet is one of the major drivers of influencing microbial diversity. And by that, we mean who is there, so which bacteria are there, what they do, and the amount of the different bacteria. So like I said, the nutrients can impact the diversity of the microbiota, and in turn, the microbiota is important for us to be able to use some nutrients. And then really the interaction between these two components is what can, can influence our health. And if you just focus on this picture without going into too much detail, um, in the green are the plant eaters, um, in the pink are meat eaters, and then in the blue are um, plant and meat eaters. And just by focusing on the circles, you can see that these really, the circles don't touch. So that means that these mammals eating these different diets have very different microbiota. And now the scientists have shown that the diet is very important and the diversity of the diet is very important in influencing our microbiome. Um, so on the one hand, um, if somebody eats a diverse or healthy diet, that means the person eats a lot of fruits and vegetables, um, whole grains, legumes, nuts and seeds, as well as some um, fermented foods such as kefir or sauerkraut, that person will more, most likely have a very diverse or quote unquote healthy microbiome. On the other hand, people who eat what we call a Western diet, so there would be a diet that's very high in processed food, fast food, a lot of sweet, fried food, that person is more likely to have a less diverse or unhealthy microbiome. And some of this was shown when you compare people who live in more Westernized worlds, and this example was the United States, versus people who live in countries that maybe rely still more on uh, agriculture, such as uh, South American countries or African countries. And you can see in these two boxes, um, each different line represents a bacteria, and the um, transparency of the line indicates how many people in that population had that certain bacteria. So one thing that's very obvious, first, first of all, is that by eating an unhealthy Western diet, there's a lot of microbes here that are missing that the people with uh, agricultural diet have. And the other thing that you can see is on, the, on this side, um, that these bacteria are present in higher concentrations. And these could potentially be harmful or unhealthy bacteria that are higher if you eat a, a Western diet. So what could be the consequences of this microbial loss? Well, now uh, some researchers are suggesting by losing microbial diversity, not just through eating a Western diet, but also our lifestyle in the Western worlds with um, a rhythm of life, living in, in cities instead of um, on, the, on the land, um, taking medication, antibiotics, as well as C-section can influence the, uh, lose, can make us lose some of our diversity. And that in turn can influence uh, our risk for developing certain diseases. So these are including immune diseases such as diabetes, metabolic diseases, um, some cancers, as well as some mental health diseases such as depression. However, we do have it in our hands to mind our microbes. And my focus, of course, is diet, even though there's other factors that we can influence, uh, that we can use to influence our microbes. But by eating a healthy diet, we can increase the amount of different bacteria that is there. 
And research has shown that eating microbi microbiota friendly food, so that would be fruits and vegetables, um, whole grains, fermented foods, um, those can have beneficial effects on various aspects of our health. So this gentleman over here to the left-hand side is Eli Mechnikov, and he has already noticed in the early 19th century that in Bulgaria, the farmers would eat a lot of fermented food, and he, uh, he recognized that these farmers have a longer and healthier life, and he associated that with the bacteria that was present in the fermented food. More recent studies now have shown that um, by increasing a diet that helps the diversity of the microbiota, these participants were able to um, lose more weight and reduce their waist circumference in a diet intervention study. And then lastly, also some research shown that eating micro microbiota friendly food can influence our brain activity, improve our mood as well as our stress levels. So what are the key take home messages that I want you to, to take from this talk? I hope that I was able to convince you that a diverse microbiome is very critical to our health and that if we lose microbial diversity, we could be at an increased risk for developing certain diseases. But we do have it in our hands to mind our microbes and I'm focusing here on, on the dietary aspects. So uh, what we can do is get our five a day. So eat plenty of fruits and vegetables with different colors and different textures. Choose whole grain products over white products. So when we eat bread or pasta or rice to choose the, the brown products um, except the white ones. Try to avoid adding, eating processed, fried, high sugar or high fat foods. And then also try, starting to include some fermented foods such as kefir or sauerkraut or kombucha into our diet. Uh, thank you.